Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest in this series of podcasts with myself, Liam Carroll, a qualified financial consultant with SYS Wealth and Financial Planners. And the idea behind these podcasts is to meet experienced professionals, get nuggets of information from them, thus giving health to your wealth. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Paddy Ibis. And Paddy is the owner and lead physical therapist at Pain Relief Limerick. He set up the company in 2014 after working as a personal trainer since 2005. And Pain Relief Limerick currently employs three staff, including a clinic manager and two physios. They specialize in helping people return to doing the things they love pain-free and without the need for regular GP visits or unnecessary medication or surgeries. And outside of work, Pod has a real passion for sport, playing, watching, and he also works as a team physio with several teams. And he's married to Linda with three kids. So, Paddy, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Very appreciative of it. Thanks, Liam. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Um, Paddy, the first question I suppose really is, from a personal point of view, how has the, the COVID affected you? Um, I suppose, in the end, kind of positively. Um, that at the start, I, I was worried I was going to, going from being busy at work to zero income overnight. Um, and I suppose the biggest thing I was worried about was uh, we're after buying a house and we've like uh, three kids and a wife to keep happy and keep faith. And I, I was worried I wouldn't be able to do that. But I suppose I, I quickly realized everyone's going to be in the same boat as I am. Um, and I kind of took the positives out of it. Um, I, I spent a lot of time working on the new house. Um, I spent a lot of time with my kids, which I hadn't been doing before. I was every day of the week with them. My wife was still working part-time um, at the start of it. So I spent a lot of time with the kids. I spent a lot of time working on my fitness and health and uh, getting out and about and doing things. So I would say overall, positively, it affected me from a personal point of view. Um, so again, financially, it wasn't great, but that's not to be all and end all either, uh, which I quickly realized, which I thought at first it was, but you know, what I got out of it was uh, money can't buy, you know. So I, I think overall it was a positive enough. I took the positives out of it. Yeah, it, it, is, what you make, it is what you make it really, isn't it? And that's the, yeah. that's the important thing. And I suppose to follow on in that part, of, uh, from a professional point of view, how did the, the, the COVID affect you? Yeah, so the again, uh, same thing. Like overnight, I went from being really busy to being shut down. Um, so I, I was worried early on that I wouldn't be able to keep the business alive. Uh, I had some money put aside, but not enough if it lasted as long as it did, really. Um, and even outside of myself, trying to keep staff here, I was worried that I'd end up having to let them go and then start from scratch myself. So, I, so from kind of a, a selfish point of view, I was thinking I'm kind of back to where I was two, three years ago. Um, but then looking at the, the lads that are working here, they would have been back looking for a job in probably the worst time ever to look for the job. Um, so I was worried about that, but it didn't happen. Um, I suppose the, the one thing I say about the government is the, with grants and things like that, they've kept businesses like me taking over. Um, and it has helped. Uh, my landlord has been good to me as well. Um, and so I had three months of no income whatsoever. Uh, we were completely shut down. Um, but once we started again, it was like nothing happened. Uh, we, the first weekend was busier than the last week before I shot. So, yeah, it yeah, started well. Um, and it, it's, it's kept going, it's going well. You wouldn't think now, the only difference is the, the likes of wearing a mask and things like that when we're treating um, and wearing the uh, PPE is the only real change. Otherwise, it's as if nothing happened, which, which is great. So at the moment, I'm doing well. I'm catching up to, uh, to where I was. So I had to borrow personal finances to keep it ticking over. But uh, we're, we're in a good place now. So there's no long-term effects, I think. Short-term, it was just a little bit of worry. Um, but again, like that, I've been as positive as I can about it. Yeah, no, no, that's, um, that's very interesting. And... Um... I suppose, Polly, just to go on to the next part of it, nuggets of information for people uh, coming out of the COVID that they can use from your experience. And I know you mentioned there about um, fitness and, and catching up with your children and things like that. Like, but any nuggets of information you'd have for people coming out of the COVID from your own experience? Hopefully coming um, up. <laughs> so uh, from a like, business point of view, 
yeah, he's a business of person, whichever you think, Paddy, yeah. Yeah, so, um, like, I suppose the, I mentioned it there, was the, the grants that the government are given, um, that they've been a big help. So just to kind of, it was to make sure you're availing of every grant that's available to you, um, because they are, they're not all financial, they're not handing out money, but they're, they're willing to pay for you to get support from the right places. <laughs> Um, and I found it hugely helpful, and that's what's kept me ticking over. Um, and again, I suppose the, the biggest thing I take out of it is making a positive out of the whole situation. Um, uh, the, the day I closed down, I was worried that, like I said, I'd have no money and I'd have nowhere to work, um, and I'm back to square one. Um, but the following day, I thought, you know what, everyone's going to be in the same boat soon, um, and I took every positive I could, and I just... Just so take things in your stride and don't, things will come round again for you, you know. Yeah, and I know, Paddy, from, um, you're very active on social media, and we, I know we had a chat about this before, but as well, you did a lot of work, I think, on, on doing Zoom calls with people to try and help them out. If they had an ailment during the period when you weren't allowed to meet them, and I think you were very you were very proactive around that time as well, just to try and keep ahead of the posse, really, weren't you? Yeah, so I was lucky, uh, it, we'll say, telehealth is what it kind of became known as, but um, online consultations, I was lucky from a point of, point of view, it's something I had been doing on a small scale. Okay. So I have, um, I have clients that come to me from um, around the country. There's, I have a couple of regular clients in Mayo and Wexford um, in Dublin. Um, but I have clients in um, London, Brighton, Boston. Um, so they'll, they'll come to me when they visit. And then I'll, if they need continuous treatment, um, they were doing online consultations with me. Um, so I had a little bit of experience in it, but it was still, I was still a small bit overwhelmed by it when I started. Uh, so people were constantly ringing me for advice and I said, you know what, I'll, I'll open up my uh, video consults to everybody. And I started doing that. And it was a bit slow taking off, but, um, and again, I was a bit overwhelmed myself at first, but became comfortable with it. And people were, were seeing the benefits, which was great. Um, I, I was, some people I was treating that, they ended up with the same amount of treatments over video call as I would have expected them to have in the clinic. I think it's a, it's a fantastic credit to party because in your occupation as, um, as a physical therapist, it's nearly the occupation you think that you could no more do on Zoom or on Teams or anything like that. So it shows exactly. the power of being able to adapt to, uh, I suppose, a crisis, I suppose, is the one to yeah. put it like. And, uh, it, it well, it's initially. a big thing. A big thing in physio is uh, trying to. I was the research says to try and be less hands-on and more uh, productive going forward uh, with, with exercise and movement, which is something I'm big on as well. Um, so that helps, and I suppose it worked as an education to both physios and uh, the general public that you can get better without a fellow digging his elbow into your back. You know. Um, and similarly, to do party, might I add. <laughs> and similarly, if there was physios out there that were all hands-on, that then doing treatments and realizing, do you know what, people can get better without that, yeah. um, just once they have the right guidance. So, um, yeah, it's a learning curve for, for everybody, I think. Yeah, and, and from our point of view, from a business perspective as well, like, like it has made things a lot easier, meeting the client once, and then maybe have to do a couple of Zoom calls and Microsoft Teams, and... And that's hugely helpful for the client as well. Like, and I think the same thing you're able to, which I wouldn't have thought was possible, let's adapt that in for in for our clients as well. And that's, isn't that fair to say? Exactly. I mean, if you're living a half an hour away and you have to drive into Limerick and find parking and come in for a treatment, have your treatment, drive home, do you know when you can cut out all that and just have your treatment at home? Uh, do you know you're, you're cutting out everything in the middle that uh, it takes things, makes things twice as long. So you're saving time and making things more convenient for yourself. And money. As well, to be fair. Exactly. Yeah. Um, in your industry, um, Paddy, is there any tip you could give to people that's totally underutilised by people or not understood and that you think could be a benefit to people? Yeah, well, I suppose, first of all, what, you just, what we just spoke about is the fact that you can, people can get better without you laying a hand on them, you know. Um, and obviously it helps sometimes, but uh, just to notice there, but I suppose... One thing I'm, I'm big on is when it comes to other physios, uh, the one bit of advice I always give to people is don't see them as competition, see them as colleagues. Um, you know, so if you have a, 
if a physio opened next door to me, I wouldn't be worried he'd be taking all my clients. So I'd be willing to walk with him and say, or her, and say, look, uh, if there's two physios in one street, people would think there's more reason for physios. Um, but if, if you need a bit of help, uh, there's a great group, um, we have a WhatsApp group of physios there that we, we often keep in touch, ask for advice if you're struggling with something, same with some Facebook groups. Um, and there's physios here in Limerick that I'd often phone up and say, look, I'm struggling with this, what do you recommend? And we help each other over and back. Um, you know, so uh, I, I can't fix absolutely everybody. Sometimes the, pers- the patient doesn't suit me or I don't suit the patient. Um, and I might say, look, maybe try seeing this girl or this guy uh, and they might be better for you. Um, mm-hmm. And just working that way together. Um, and I, I asked the, uh, uh, another physio lately, what did he do for marketing to get people in the door? And he goes, geez, I'm not telling you. I guess I took his page. <laughs> Whereas yeah. I do the same conversation, people ask me, I tell them, I tell them everything, you know. Um, <laughs> because again, if, if you're educating the public better on the need for physio, they're more likely to take it up and tell their friends about it. So that's the one tip that I give is you know, uh, treat your competitors as your colleagues, not your competitors. Yeah. I remember somebody said one day about their competitors, they're great, but I'm great as well. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's the, it's the way around it, yeah. Um, Friday, I know from personal experience, I went to you a couple of times and, and I think I'm in the same network group as you, business network group as you, and um, one of your key points I'd always take is how, how quickly can I get rid of you? And you're not the type to um, try and get someone back for consultation after consultation, consultation, and, uh, and lead someone dry for money. Like that's not, that's not in your mantra. And uh, anyone I've spoken to that has gone to you have, have reiterated that as well. And I've sent a few people your way and to men slash women, they'd been absolutely delighted with the with the treatment you've given. So that's um, that is your credit. But just to just to ask you um, the best bit of advice that you ever got, buddy, be it from a professional or be it a family member or, or heard it on television, maybe or whatever. But the best bit of advice. Um, I actually, funny enough, I was talking to someone about this a couple of days ago. Um, I was here at the clinic one day. I was at the time I was working on my own, um, and I was debating taking on staff. And someone, someone said to me, I should take on um, someone to work at front desk and do admin and receptionist before I take on a physio. And I, didn't, I couldn't understand the idea because a physio could come in and treat people and make money. Whereas an admin, I just saw, I answer the phone and I pay them money. And you know, it's throwing money away is what it felt like to me. Um, but then I, I was outside the door one day and there was fag butts and bits of leaves on the street and I was sweeping them. And a man said to me, uh, I know him, know him well and he's walking past and he said, what are you doing out here? And I said, I'm just cleaning the street. I said, make the place look respectable. And um, he said, are you not working? And I said, yeah, but I've a bit of time off. And he said, you could pay a man, uh, a man or a woman, a ten or an hour to sweep the street for you if you go in. He said, look at the amount of money you could make in that hour by working on your business. And I said, you know, that's a great piece of advice. And then I took that for hiring the receptionist. And I said, right, I'll do that first. Because like that, me ringing people and answering calls and doing my social media, all those things are taking up so much time. Where if I had someone else doing that, I could then work on giving better uh, aftercare um, to people that are coming to me and working on letting people know where we are as well. So they kind of go hand in hand was, you know, let someone else do the jobs that you don't need to do. And like that, having someone on the, on the front desk. And people compliment uh, my front desk very well because she's very friendly. She's really good at what she does. And she makes you feel a lot more comfortable before you, before you even get a treatment. Yeah, that, that's massive. And it, it, there's a bit of empathy there. And uh, it's not yeah. and all that, yeah. And she's very good. I was in there a few times as well. Like, so yeah, without, without a doubt. Hoddy, you've been very generous with your time. Um, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. And I suppose you're delighted this week. Kildaima Palace Kinry won the County Intermediate Hurling Championship. So that was a, a big boost to the area. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to see some of the silver out the way anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hoddy, thanks a million. And uh, we'll talk to you in the near future. All right. Thanks, Liam. Thanks for having me.